Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain the suspect. This movie tells the story of a former North Korean agent who tries to uncover the volatile secrets hidden inside the eyeglasses of a dead man. Accused of murder, his wife murdered, wanted for treason, and desperate to uncover the volatile national secrets hidden inside the eyeglasses. He wants the truth, and he'll start a war to get it. Can he carry out his revenge, and reveal all the secrets? Let's find out in The Suspect. The suspect begins by showing a man named Dong Chiao, who is an illegal immigrant from North Korea who lives in one of the slum areas in South Korea. A former female reporter named Kyung Hee, who is making a documentary about immigrants from North Korea who choose to leave their homeland in search of a better life in South Korea, tries to approach Dong Chiao as a source. But Dong Chiao often ignores the woman, so Kyung Hee's colleague suggests that she find another source who is more friendly and open. However, Kyung Hee still insists on using Dong Chiao as her source, because Kyung Hee often follows Dong Chiao secretly, observing the man's activities all day long. Day to day, Dong Chiao works as a personal chauffeur, where his daughter's photo always hangs on the dashboard glass whenever Dong Chiao drives, so that he always has a passion for life. One night, Dong Chiao meets an old man named Gun Ho, who is a successful North Korean immigrant and owns a company called Heju Group. Gun Ho knows Dong Chiao very well, who used to be a highly ranked North Korean spy, but chose to defect to South Korea for a better life. Dong Chiao then drives Gun Ho home, where one of Gun Ho's servants hands Dong Chiao a piece of paper with his name and address on it, because Gun Ho knows that Dong Chiao is searching for his family. Gun Ho also gives checks and cash to help with Dong Chiao's life. As he is about to leave Gun Ho's house, Dong Chiao senses that something is wrong and looks at the CCTV cameras installed around the house. On the other hand, a man appears to enter Gun Ho's room, where he is fast asleep. The man then sedates Gun Ho, takes his glasses and puts them in a box, then injects something into the sole of his foot. The man then looks around, and notices that someone else is in the room, which is none other than Dong Chiao. Not only was the man surprised by Dong Chiao's presence there, the entire South Korean National Intelligence Service team, led by a man named Kim Sok Ho, was also surprised by Dong Chiao's appearance. Sok Ho and his team have been keeping an eye on Gun Ho for a long time, and the man is Sok Ho's errand boy. Without thinking, Dong Chiao then engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the man, until the intruder finally dies. A dying Gun Ho then asks Dong Chiao to take his eyeglass case and bury it because it's so important. Sok Ho then sends the police officers over to Gun Ho's house while Dong Chiao is still there. The police came and immediately secured the scene. One of the cops then asks Dong Chiao to hand over Gun Ho's eyeglass case indicating that the cop is Sok Ho's henchman. Realizing this, Dong Chiao then put up a fight, and tried to run away from there. After Dong Chiao managed to escape with the important items they were after, Sok Ho then ordered to clean up the crime scene by killing everyone who lived in Gun Ho's house, with the aim of making Dong Chiao the main suspect in the murder of the president of Heju Group and the rest who were there. After that, Sok Ho decided to contact one of the field agents of the National Intelligence Service, a man named Min Se Hoon, who is very good at hunting down and capturing secret agents from North Korea. After learning that he's on a mission to capture Ji Dong Chiao, Se Hoon gets really excited because he knows the man so well and has faced Dong Chiao before. The next day, Dong Chiao, realizing that he is being watched by South Korean secret agents, then goes to Kyung Hee and her partner, a male cameraman named Ju, who is waiting in their car to start following Dong Chiao as usual. Dong Chiao then gets in the car, and asks Kyung Hee to speed up the car. Thinking that Dong Chiao has now changed his mind and is willing to be the source, Kyung Hee excitedly drives the car. On the way, Kyung Hee tries to convince Dong Chiao that she is willing to be a resource, so that it will help other North Korean immigrants who choose to stay in South Korea to get a better life, but Dong Chiao doesn't say anything. Elsewhere, Sok Ho and Se Hoon are attending a meeting with top military and police officers to discuss the assassination case of the president of Haju Group, who is planning to serve as North Korea's representative and mediator in an important meeting that will discuss relations between the two countries. Sok Ho has prepared a team, and also sent Si Hu as the person who will lead the operation to catch the killer who is known to be a former North Korean secret agent named Ji Dong Chiao. After the meeting, Se Hoon briefly asks why Dong Chiao had to shoot Gun Ho and his servants, because as a highly trained secret agent, Dong Chiao could easily kill them all and disguise their deaths as if it was an accident to avoid suspicion. But Sok Ho asks Se Hoon not to think about that and just focus on catching Dong Chiao. In this mission, Sehun will be assisted by a man named Captain Joe, one of his juniors when he was in the military who is very good at wiretapping. Captain Joe then gathers all the team members who have been prepared for the mission to capture Dong Chiao, and begins to explain to them all who Ji Dong Chiao really is. 
Dongqiao comes from a military training camp in a small town west of Pyongyang, where it is the most difficult military training camp in North Korea due to extreme physical and mental training. So many of the candidates were seriously injured, and not a few who eventually died. Anyone who manages to graduate from the military training camp will immediately join the elite forces and be sent abroad to carry out various missions that will benefit North Korea. Ji Dong Chiaol is known as North Korea's smartest and toughest spy, which makes it difficult for agents from other intelligence agencies around the world. Dong Chiaol is very skilled and can always escape, even when he is surrounded by both the CIA and Interpol. Turns in 2009 in Hong Kong, when South Korean secret agents, led by Sehun, are eyeing a ship carrying a cargo of weapons to be smuggled into China by North Korea, where Dong Chiaol is tasked with guarding the ship from those who intend to thwart the smuggling. Captain Joe then says that Dong Chiaol managed to knock out all of Sehun's men alone, which indicates Ji Dong Chiaol is a very dangerous person, so they all need to be more vigilant against him. On the other hand, Dong Chiaol, who had slipped out of Kyung Hee's car in the middle of a traffic jam, then mingled with the crowds of people passing by on the streets, and heading to the address Goon Ho's servant gave him last night. Meanwhile at the NIS headquarters, Sehun orders a search for everyone known to have been in contact with Dong Chiaol over the past few years, because according to the police investigation, Dong Chiaol has been named the prime suspect in the murder of Goon Ho and his servants, because they found his fingerprints on the weapon used to kill Goon Ho, and finds the weapon at Dong Chiaol's house when the police conduct a search. A team member reports to Sehun that Dong Chiaol was seen an hour ago with a former female reporter named Kyung Hee and his cameraman named Ju. After ordering his men to secure Kyung Hee and her partner, Captain Jo then tells Sehun that Kyung Hee is making a documentary about North Korean immigrants who have defected from their homeland and chose to live in South Korea. Sehun interrogates Kyung Hee and asks why the she made Dong Chiaol her source, but Kyung Hee doesn't respond. After Sehun told him that Dong Chiaol was involved in the murder of the chairman of Heju Group, Kyung Hee and her colleagues were shocked because they didn't expect this. On the other hand, Sok Ho sends one of his underlings, a man named Dong, to snatch Goon Ho's glasses which were taken by Dong Chiaol because Sok Ho was actually only after it, but his plan was thwarted by Dong Chiaol. Dong then tells Sok Ho that he found a piece of paper with the name and address of a person named Lee Guang Zhou at Dong Chiaol's house. Upon further investigation, Lee Guang Zhou is a former North Korean secret agent who successfully defected and has now become a South Korean citizen. Sok Ho then orders a sniper to keep an eye on Lee Guang Zhou because Dong Chiaol will likely meet him. Meanwhile, Dong Chiaol tries to contact his acquaintances, but Sehun has managed to tap all of Dong Chiaol's contacts, and interrupts so that he can speak directly to Dong Chiaol. Hearing Sehun's voice, Dong Chiaol immediately recognized him as a secret agent from South Korea who he had encountered while on a mission in Hong Kong in 2009. It turned out that at that time, Dong Chiaol didn't necessarily kill Sehun, after he became the only secret agent who managed to come face to face with Dong Chiaol despite being quite badly injured. Dong Chiaol gives up killing Sehun after learning that Sehun is a father and husband, just like him. Therefore, Dong Chiaol lets Sehun live and decides to abandon his mission, then just disappears. Sehun says that he will hunt Dong Chiaol everywhere because he has a debt to pay. But Dong Chiaol tells Sehun that he is innocent and that he is only being made a scapegoat for the murder of the chairman of Heju Group and his servants. Obviously, Sehun doesn't believe Dong Chiaol's words. Dong Chiaol then tells about the killer he met at Goon Ho's house, as well as the people who were after Goon Ho's glasses, then asks Sehun to investigate. Dong Chiaol then asks for a little time to investigate something, after which he promises to turn himself in. After giving Sehun an address and asking the man to come there, Dong Chiaol hangs up before Sehun and his team can trace his whereabouts. Hyung Hee then barges in and tells Sehun that Dong Chiaol is hunting for the man who killed his wife and daughter. After getting his revenge, Dong Chiaol contemplates suicide. Dong Chiaol finally finds Li Guangzhu's address, sneaks into the man's house, and runs into him while calling someone on his cell phone. After taking Guangzhu's gun, Dong Chiaol then asks him about his wife and daughter whom Guangzhu had killed. After abandoning his mission in Hong Kong, Dong Chiaol is considered a traitor to the country, and his entire family is executed, with Guangzhou being the one who executed Dong Chiaol's wife and daughter. Unbeknownst to both of them, a sniper sent by Sok Ho is on the scene, ready to shoot Dong Chiaol. When Dong Chiaol is about to shoot Guangzhu, he asks permission to take a pen and write something on his hand and show it to Dong Chiaol. As Dong Chiaol moves to get closer, suddenly a flash of light hits his face so he notices the sniper's presence, and manages to dodge the shot. Dong Chiaol then takes Guangzhu's cell phone and runs away from there. Guangzhou manages to escape with his wife, while Dong and his men start chasing Dong Chiaol. Knowing that the other party intervened in the mission to capture Dong Chiaol, 
Sehun was furious that he and his team should be the only ones assigned to the mission. Sehun immediately orders his men to keep moving and hunt down Dong Chiao in the crowd. While on the run, Dong Chiao accidentally runs into a sniper trying to kill him, and learns that the sniper is a former North Korean secret agent working for Soko. The two of them then engage in a fierce battle in the crowd, until Dong Chiao finally manages to kill the sniper. Sehun, who knows about the confrontation between Dong Chiao and the sniper, becomes suspicious because the sniper is not a member of his team, and assumes that Sokho has sent another team to catch Dong Chiao without his knowledge. Sehun then goes to Sokho and gives him a recorded conversation between himself and Dong Chiao that mentions Dong Chiao being made a scapegoat, and people are after Gun Ho's glasses. But Sokho ignores Sehun's and simply says that he received orders from the higher ups and can't say more about it. Sehun turns out to already know about Sokho controlling former North Korean secret agents who had defected and hired them in exchange for the asylum they would get in South Korea. But Sokho doesn't seem to care much about this and asks Sehun to do his job as he's been told. After learning that Sokho is moving with his own troops, Sehun then asks Captain Jo to investigate Gun Ho's murder case further, to prove Dong Chiao's words that he was only made a scapegoat. Sehun begins to investigate the forensic report on Gun Ho's fingerprints and cause of death by threatening the head of the police forensics team that the man will lose his job if it is proven that he has cheated on the forensic report at the crime scene of Gun Ho's murder. Meanwhile, Captain Zhou investigates the past of Dong Chiao who disappeared after abandoning his mission in Hong Kong. Dong Chiao apparently tries to return to his country, but he was considered a traitor because of the highest power transfer in North Korea, where elite troops from the old government would be considered traitors and executed, as well as Dong Chiao. After undergoing severe torture and about to be executed by hanging, Dong Chiao learns that his wife and daughter have been murdered. Knowing this, Dong Chiao is determined that he will not die before avenging the death of his family. Dong Chiao finally manages to escape the hanging. Captain Zhou manages to track down the Dong Chiao family at a shelter in China, where Guang Zhou is ordered to execute everyone in the refuge. But then, Guang Zhou sees Dong Chiao's wife and daughter who are his partners. With Guang Zhou unable to pull the trigger to kill them, Finally another secret agent arrives and does his job. Wang Zhou kills the man instead, then flees to South Korea and works for Sokho. Meanwhile, Dong Chiao seems to be reminiscing about his togetherness with his wife who was found dead in a shelter in China. When he confronts Guang Zhou at his house, Guang Zhou scribbles something on his hand that says, your daughter is still alive. Therefore, Dong Chiao is determined to keep fighting for the whereabouts of his beloved daughter, no matter what the obstacles. Dong Chiao then calls Sehun, asking him to find Guangzhou and exchange him for the glasses Sokho wants. At first, Sehun refuses, but Dong Chiao says that Gunho's glasses have an important secret that North and South Korea are after. On the other hand, Captain Zhou manages to find a connection to Kyonghee, who turns out to be investigating violations committed by Sokho who employed former North Korean secret agents who had defected. Kyonghee continues to insist on approaching Dong Chiao, because Sokho once offered the man to work with him, but Dong Chiao refuses. Kyung Hee tries to uncover it. If Dong Chiao is willing to give all the information about Sok Ho recruiting former North Korean secret agents who have defected, Sehun begins to think that Sok Ho is involved in all this and is acting alone to achieve his own interests, not for the country. Dong Chiao then calls Kyung Hee and asks her to meet him somewhere. After outwitting Sok Ho's henchmen as well as Sehun who dive right into pursuit, Dong Chiao takes Kyung Hee somewhere and asks her to record it as she reveals the secret behind Gun Ho's glasses which is none other than the formula for making secret chemical weapons. Kyung Hee also records Dong Chiao's statement that he wasn't the killer of Gun Ho and his servants. After that, Kyung Hee promises to help Dong Chiao clear of all charges. On the other hand, Sok Ho is furious to learn that Guang Zhou told Dong Chiao that his daughter is still alive. Sokho then orders Guangzhou to kill Dong Chiao, Kyung Hee, as well as Sehun. It didn't take long for Guangzhou to find Kyung Hee's whereabouts, moreover, he was also assisted by Kim, a former North Korean secret agent who also worked for Sokho. The chemical weapons formula is then picked up by Kim, and he leaves immediately while Guangzhou is about to kill Kyung Hee. However, Dong Chiao rushes in and attacks Guangzhou right away. A fierce battle ensues between them, until Dong Chiao finally beats Guangzhou. At the end of his life, Wang Zhou reveals that Dong Chiao's daughter was still alive and was sold to China by Sok Ho as a slave, and that the person who had ordered the assassination of the chairman of Haiju Group was Sok Ho. On the other hand, Sehun manages to get evidence that Dong Chiao was not involved in the murder of the chairman of Haiju Group, and finds an empty bullet casing with someone's fingerprint, which was found near the victim's body. Sehun manages to find Kyung Hee and informs her that he already knows the real reason Kyung Hee is making a documentary about defecting North Korean immigrants and offers to help her as long as she agrees to come with him. 
Hyung Hee agrees, and she calls Ju to bring her some CDs containing important video recordings of the investigation he's been doing with Sokho so far. On the other hand, Captain Jo tells Sehun that Sokho intends to sell the chemical weapons formula to an armed dealer based in the Middle East for a fantastic price. After Kim gave the chemical weapons formula to Sokho, he then ordered Kim to kill Dong Jiao. Meanwhile, Dong Jiao tries to escape from the attacks of Sokho's men with a very tense escape, until he finally confronts Kim in a very adrenaline-pumping situation, where they crash against each other's cars while they were driving. In the incident, Dong Jiao survived while Kim died. Dong Jiao actually manages to escape by jumping into the river. Elsewhere, Kyung Hee and Sehun are investigating copies of the chemical weapons formula from Goon Ho's glasses in a laboratory belonging to Kyung Hee's acquaintances. At the same time, Sokho hands over the formula to his prospective buyer, who is willing to spend a lot of money to get the chemical weapons formula. But before that, the prospective buyer intends to first check whether the formula is a formula for making chemical weapons or not. Unexpectedly, it turns out that the formula is not the formula for making chemical weapons as expected by Sokho, but a chemical formula that can fertilize wheat plants that can be grown in any soil condition. After that, the prospective buyer immediately cancels the agreement and expels Sokho. Feeling completely cheated, Sokho then calls Director Song from Haju Group who told him that Gun Ho is developing chemical weapons, and berates the man because it turns out to be completely wrong. Sokho asks Director Song to compensate for all the losses and threatens to make him a suspect in Gun Ho's murder case if he doesn't do what he wants. After that, Sokho holds a press conference in front of the National Intelligence Service building, where he will reveal the murder case of the chairman of Haju Group. The reporters who packed the press conference were taken aback by the appearance of Dong Chiao who immediately pointed a gun at Sokho, who then fired a gun up, sending people into panic. Dong Chiao then takes Sokho hostage and takes him inside the building, locking all the doors. Meanwhile the police, SWAT teams, and NIS field agents surround the building from all sides and prepare to ambush Dong Chiao. Dong Chiao threatens Sokho into telling him where his daughter is. Since Sokho refuses to say it, Dong Chiao shoots Sokho in the leg. Sokho's personal bodyguard manages to enter and attack Dong Chiao. Even though they had had a fierce battle, Dong Chiao was still able to deal with it. Not long after, Sehun manages to barge in and then beats up Sokho, for knowing all about him who recruited former North Korean secret agents who had defected to serve his own interests, and sold Dong Chiao's daughter into slavery in China. Sokho seems unafraid and threatens Sehun back. Meanwhile, with the help of Captain Zhou and his partner, Kyung Hee manages to uncover the truth about the murder of the chairman of Heju Group, as well as evidence regarding the involvement of Sok Ho and Director Song who worked together to get rid of Gun Ho and sell chemical weapons to an arms dealer. Sok Ho who knows that all his bad things have been exposed in public by Kyung Hee, then feels angry and immediately shoots a gun at Sehun. But it turns out that the gun is empty, and Sok Ho gets beat up by Sehun. Dong Chiao then appears and interrupts Sehun because he still has business with Sok Ho. He again asks Sokho where his daughter is, and again refuses to tell him. Sokho then opens the window and a squad of snipers already at the ready across the building, aim their guns at Dong Chiao. Sokho laughs, feeling himself still in control. He then asks Sehun to kill Dong Chiao in exchange for clearing his name. But Sehun is fed up with Sokho and hands the gun to Dong Chiao, and finally he shoots Sokho to death. Dong Chiao is finally caught, and led by Sehun to his car through the crowd. Dong Chiao looks at Kyung Hee, pauses and smiles at her and bows slowly to the woman in gratitude for all that Kyung Hee has done to help him. Before leaving, Captain Jo gives Sehun a flash drive containing all the crimes Sok Ho has committed and a piece of paper with the address. On the way, Sehun shows Dong Chiao a family photo because thanks to it, Dong Chiao didn't kill him. Sehun intends to return the favor to Dong Chiao by giving him the address of his daughter's whereabouts in China that Captain Jo managed to track down, and is about to let Dong Chiao run away from him when he stops by for a cigarette. After everything that happened, Sehun was questioned by Captain Zhou and was considered negligent because Dong Chiao managed to escape from his surveillance. Kyung Hee returns to being a television reporter, and she reports that North Korea has succeeded in obtaining a formula that increases wheat production to meet the food needs of its people. Meanwhile, Dong Chiao made it to China and found the whereabouts of his daughter who was made a slave in an agricultural field. The film ends by showing Dong Chiao entering a farmhouse where people who make children, including his daughter, become slaves. This film shows the struggle of a father to find his lost daughter, despite having to face a painful torture and being made a scapegoat in a conspiracy involving two countries. Indeed, a hard struggle and strong determination will not betray the results. After going through various obstacles, Dong Chiao is finally able to meet his daughter again. On the other hand, Kyung Hee's figure who continues to fight for the truth even though she has to lose her job, 
deserves appreciation because Kyung Hee doesn't care about any risks, as long as the truth is revealed in public. And through the figure of Sehun, we are shown to continue to uphold justice, no matter the risk, as well as about returning the favor for the kindness of others, even though that person is the enemy.